Welcome to the SDK Compliance Clinic for Google Play. I'm Artem, Play Policy Consultation Manager here at Google. Today, we would like to share common policies issue that Android developers using your SDK may experience when publishing on Google Play. We know that users are concerned about privacy, and consumers expect brands to invest more in it. Play policy aside, research by Gartner suggests that up to 75% of users will be directly impacted by new privacy regulations by the end of 2024, which is in itself a reflection of growing regulatory and consumer demand around privacy. Google Play's team strives to build the most trustworthy and safe developers ecosystem. And this is a part of our work to continuously enhance the privacy experience and expectations for our users, our developers, and all of the solutions providers in the mobile app ecosystem. In February 2022, Google announced an initiative to build the privacy sandbox on Android with the goal of introducing new, more private advertising solutions. Those solutions will limit sharing of user data with third parties and operate without cross-app identifiers. In April 2022, Google launched data safety section for apps to be more transparent about the data collection and use behaviors on play. And in May 2022, at Google I.O., we announced the launch of Google Play SDK Index, a public portal to help app developers make informed decisions about SDKs they incorporate into their app experience. And recently, we launched the SDK requirements to give app developers one place to see all policies requirements they must keep in mind when incorporating SDKs into their apps. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you to do so. During this conversation, we want to encourage SDK providers to stay up to date with Google Play policies by covering some SDK behaviors that often cause apps to violate our Play policies. And who is the better to help me with this if not one of our own Android security engineers, Brian, whose team has reviewed many SDKs. Hi, Artem. It's great to be here today. The privacy and security space is something that we take seriously at Google, and I'm eager to provide some more information to SDK providers. Thanks, Brian. Can you please highlight some common SDK behaviors that may cause apps to violate our policies? Absolutely. One of the highest priority problems we'd like to discuss today involves the mishandling of personal and sensitive user data. When app developers include an SDK in their app, they must ensure that the SDK handles user data in a way that respects user privacy and consent and maintain strong security practices. One big part of that is it's important for SDKs and apps to not access more data than is required for the apps to function properly. So what is the ideal way to do that, Brian? Yeah, good question, Artem. First off, apps must limit the access, collection, use, and sharing of personal and sensitive user data acquired through the app-to-app -app and service functionality and policy-conforming purposes reasonably expected by the user. To best protect users' data and prevent a policy violation from occurring, don't collect data by default with the assumption that consent has been provided. And as a best practice for SDKs, ensure that a mechanism exists for the app developer to accurately initialize the SDK according to this user-facing consent event. Please tell me more. Sure. SDKs should not assume that a user has consented to any personal or sensitive data collection, even if an application holds the permission to access a given data type. For example, if an application collects data that is considered personal and sensitive, a best practice for the SDK is to implement a mechanism that allows app developers to signal to the SDK that the user has consented to collection of this data. For example, instead of SDK's collection location data, as soon as the SDK's init function is called, the SDK should wait to collect that data until after the application has signaled to the SDK that the user has consented to any collection of location data. In other words, app developers have to answer three basic questions before starting to collect any user data, including through an SDK. First one, for what purpose am I collecting the data? And is that purpose policy compliant? Second one, do I need to provide a prominent disclosure to my users and obtain their consent? And if yes, third one, what type of data user consent to collect or share? You mentioned types of personal and sensitive user data. Does our policy say anything about this? Great question. 
Our user data policy indicates that personal and sensitive user data includes, but isn't limited to, personally identifiable information, financial and payment information, authentication information, phone book, contacts, device location, SMS and call related data, health data, health connect data, inventory of other apps on the device, microphone, camera, and other sensitive device or usage data. All this data allows developers and SDK providers to access a lot of information about users. And that's why if SDK that is designed to collect personal and sensitive user data by default, we could ask app developers to provide sufficient evidence demonstrating that their app meets the prominent disclosure and consent requirements of this policy, including with regards to the data handling via SDK. Makes sense. That's why it's important for SDK providers to remember the following. First, limit your collection of personal and sensitive user data only to policy compliant reasons and only to what is needed to offer the services provided by the app. Second, limit the access, collection, use, and sharing of personal and sensitive user data, handle it securely when it's collected, and most importantly, never sell personal and sensitive user data. And if you are not sure what we mean by sale, please check our user data and SDK requirement policies. The links to the articles are attached under the video. What is another common behavior you see lead to policy violations? Good question. Another example of a common violative practice that we have observed historically is the linking of identifiers. And perhaps the canonical example of this is an SDK accessing both a persistent identifier along with personal and sensitive user data. Next, the SDK may send them off of the user's device to their web server. Oh yes, that one. Let's get deeper into linking of identifiers. What are the most common examples, Brian? Good question. We often see that personal and u sensitive user data is linked to what we call a persistent device identifier. From a privacy perspective, this is problematic. It allows for the targeting and re-identifying of users, which is precisely the behavior that most privacy-conscious users are worried about. And what are some examples of persistent device identifiers? Some examples are mobile device unique identifiers like IMEI, IMSI, build serial number, SIM serial number. And Artem, we should probably explain that it's not just personal and sensitive user data that should not be linked to personal device identifiers. Great point, Brian. In fact, our user data and SDK requirements policies state, and I'm quoting, persistent device identifiers may not be linked to other personal and sensitive user data or resortable device identifiers. The S policies goes on to be even more precise and explains that Android advertising ID is considered a resortable identifier and can be linked with persistent identifiers for either advertising or analytics use case. Except for rare exceptions referenced in the policies, this behavior is not allowed and will be considered a violation of Google Play policies that could result in policy enforcement. So Brian, to summarize, what are some of your recommendations and reminders to SDK providers? Sure thing. Here are five of my best practices. Number one, Keep up to date with Google Play policies to make sure your SDK does not cause apps to be in violation. Number two, support the latest API security and data minimization features to properly protect sensitive user data. Third, help your customers understand what user data your SDK may collect and the reason for its use. This is so that app developers can include this in their prominent disclosure and consent to end users and in their data safety form and in privacy policies where it applies. Number four, it's a best practice to implement a consent checking mechanism the app can call so that you aren't collecting data inappropriately. And number five, don't transmit multiple identifiers to the same endpoint without first reviewing the linkage of identifiers restrictions referenced in the Google Play policies. I think those are great practices, Brian. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. And for our viewers, I hope the video helped you better understand Google Play SDK requirements. Please make sure to visit Google Play Policy Center and our Google Play Developers community, where you can ask questions related to SDK requirements and other Google Play policies. Thank you, and until next time.